In the world of Naruto, we've met several characters who had the dream of becoming Hokage. Both of Naruto's parents, for instance, they want to be Hokage with Naruto's father Minato eventually reaching that position. We've had long shots like Minakura and Konohamaru and Kiba who've all had dreams of being Hokage, but none of them ever came close to even getting to the position. We've had Uchiha like Madara who, once upon a time, the idea once it set with them, Madara had given thought to Hashirama's offer to become the first Hokage until he heard Tobirama tell Hashirama that no one would ever follow Madara. And we had Sasuke, who had the goal of becoming Hokage until Naruto's main character plot armor beat Sasuke into submission in Naruto Volume 72. However, what if I told you that Itachi Uchiha didn't just have the wisdom of a Hokage as an academy student, but he also had the dream of being Hokage as well? Well, in today's video, we're going to hop in our time machines and go back to when Itachi was only a young child, but already had both the goal of being Hokage as as well as a clearly defined path towards the position and grandiose ideas on how to use the Hokage position to change the ninja world itself. So the information is going to be coming to us from the Itachi Shinden Daylight story which covers Itachi's childhood up until the moment that Itachi is recruited into the Anbu Black Ops. In the scene I'm going to share with you guys Sasuke has just been born and after seeing his younger brother at home for the very first time Itachi's sense of protection for his younger brother causes him to go out onto the training grounds and begin training immediately intensely. Shuriken Jutsu, Tai Jutsu, Meditation, Itachi throws himself into all aspects of his training, performing Jutsu at the age of five better than some grown adults are able to do. Each time Itachi closes his eyes, the images from the day that his father took him onto the battlefield, they flood his mind. The dead bodies that were on the ground, the men that were taking their last breaths, and the anger that it caused Itachi, it fuels Itachi during his training because it's now dawned upon him that it isn't just he who's going to be expected to face such a reality, but his newborn brother will one day be expected to be a ninja on the battlefield as well. This leads to Itachi's goal to become the strongest ninja in the village, so powerful that he won't run into any roadblocks to be Hokage like his father did, where Hugaku's lineage as an Uchiha was used against him because of the sins of Madara and the elders and Danzo privately acknowledging that Fugaku was a generational talent like Minato but keeping his efforts in the second and the third ninja war sealed away despite Fugaku having a flea on sight order like Minato where he earned the nickname Wicked Eye Fugaku. Itachi believed that if he became so powerful his presence couldn't be denied he'd be the only choice of Hokage when he was old enough to be considered for the role. However what would Itachi do if he were ever to be Hokage? Well, let's take a look at what he's saying. So, with the scene and the context being set, it's here I'm going to read the selected passages from the novel, then I'm going to come back to you guys with my thoughts, and it's here I'm going to begin quoting. Itachi simply refused to accept his father's conception that a ninja was someone who lived in the midst of killing. Were the ninja arts and chakra really only for fighting? Itachi was sure that they were not. If you had the greatest strength, you could step in between people fighting and you could stop them. If you were a ninja more powerful than the ninja at war, if no ninja, no matter how skilled, stood no chance against you, then everyone would listen to and obey your commands. Itachi wanted to be that kind of a ninja. He believed that if he were more powerful, more capable than everyone else, he would be able to stop the enormous fights like the last great ninja war from happening. He had a goal, so his devotions were not difficult. End quote. Itachi later goes on to say that when he becomes strong enough to become the Hokage, that he would use that position to force the other ninja villages to listen to his commands for peace and make a treaty amongst nations in order to end the fighting. He'd use his being so much more powerful than all the other Kage to get them to agree to sharing resources and opening up more trade between nations so that when one of them thrived, all of them thrived. He'd use his power to establish that and make it where ninja villages don't have to depend as much on the feudal lords of their nations because the feudal lords were the ones who gave orders to the ninja villages in order to engage in wars, all while not having a drop of their own blood being spilled because the ninjas were doing the fighting for them. Itachi saw the problem with the ninja system and with how the feudal lords were running everything and he wanted to become so powerful that he could renegotiate the relationship between feudal lord and Kage. Being taken onto the battlefield at such a young age by his father both made him a pacifist but also a realist who understood that the ninja world only understood power and those who have power are able to bring about change faster but when we look at the young Itachi's thought process we see both a bright mind 
Shine, who is clearly reading the scrolls of the previous Hokage. But we also see some of the thinking that made Madara Uchiha so dangerous and also made Sasuke into a worse version of Madara if Naruto didn't step in to stop him. Itachi's line of thinking, it was in absolutes. He believed in absolute raw power that if he had enough of it, he could be the one that forces peace between nations when in reality, being that much stronger than others would only make secret resentment be harbored towards you. And it's something that Itachi would later realize later on when he spoke to Sasuke before he was accused of murdering Shisui. Itachi would say those who are talented have the burden of being envy or even hate it. And a big reason Itachi came to understand that is that he saw over the years that attaining power at a rapid rate that he'd been seeking to do made him both enemies and the ire of jealousy for quite a few people, even Itachi's own sensei. Even Orochimaru, one of the legendary Sani, who at the time was considered to be one of the strongest shinobi alive, when he saw Itachi training where he had all the shuriken and projectiles, they were set to go off simultaneously while Itachi was standing on a training stand. Orochimaru said, even for someone such as himself, that this would have been a death mission. And he tried to step in in order to stop Itachi during that training. And he was left in awe that Itachi survived when he cut on his Sharingan. A memory that when his body was failing many years later in the timeline, just before he and Kabuto were making the final preparations to try to take Sasuke's body, Orochimaru recalled that memory when he said they missed an opportunity in getting Itachi's body. Using power, in the way that Itachi intended while he did have good intentions. It wouldn't have ended well and it would have caused resentment to both build up within the village and outside the village itself. It's interesting to see that when Itachi went to the battlefield at such a young age, it affected him on multiple levels and it became a driving factor that caused him to train to a point where he was training on his own even when he wasn't training with his father. Itachi wanted strength to force peace upon the ninja world. But he also realized some of what Hagoromo tried to teach the world a thousand years ago, which is when he first started sharing chakra with people and teaching the art of ninshu, he wanted chakra to be used to connect people, but people eventually turned ninshu into ninjutsu and they used it to wage war. Itachi looked at all the things they could do with chakra and he was already wondering if there was more that they could do with chakra to try and help the world besides using it as a weapon to kill people. The small moments like this show the complexity of Itachi as a character, but also show that for as smart and as wise as Hiruzen told us that Itachi was, due to how he was brought up by Fugaku and the ninja system itself, all that brilliance ultimately wasn't directed in the right direction, and by the time Itachi truly understood the path he has to take in order to become Hokage and lead the world towards change, by that point in time, he was already considered a rogue ninja and a member of the Akoski, which is absolutely ironic. He had the power and the wisdom that he finally sought, but he wasn't in position to use in the way that he wanted to. However, that's going to be it for today's video. What kind of Hokage do you think Itachi would have been? Well, you think that over, click here to watch these other Naruto videos you see on the screen right now.